Hello, hello, I'm Breton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into med school and other professional programs. Today, we will be talking about another high-yield psych soci topic you are likely to see on the MCAT. We'll be discussing the different types of memory and diseases that can affect memory, as well as the interferences that can disrupt memory formation, as well as recall. First, let's start with where memory begins, encoding. Encoding is the process of putting new information into memory, shown here in blue. It can be effortful or automatic. There are also different types of encoding, such as semantic encoding, which is stronger than both acoustic and visual encoding. This means that if we want to remember something for a long time, it's best to attach meaning to it. Don't worry, we're going to dive in all about what these different types of encodings are in just a moment. But before we dig into that, let's take a look at how we can organize human memory. It can be organized into three main branches. We have a sensory memory, short-term memory, and long-term memory. Sensory memory is the initial stage of memory processing. It briefly holds sensory information for about less than a second from our environment, such as sights, sounds, and smells. Sensory memory is, is divided into different types, such as iconic memory and echoic memory. Iconic memory helps with visual information. So if you look at this video and close your eyes, for a brief flash, you will still see the video even though your eyes are closed. That is an iconic memory. Whereas echoic memory is after you say after you hear a word or phrase, you'll still hear that kind of ringing in your ear. So if I say the word ball, you can hear me say the word ball for half a second after I actually say it. So this is a an echoic memory, which is within our sensory memory subdivision. This is the shortest type of memory and is easy to forget. Next, we have our short-term memory. This is also known as working memory. It's the next stage of memory processing and has a limited capacity and can hold information for a short period of time, typically up to 20 to 30 seconds. Short-term memory is essential for tasks such as problem solving, decision making, and language comprehending. Nice job, you're doing it right now. And finally, we want to talk about long-term memory. This is the most important for you because you're going to be taking the MCAT, right? You want to have a lot of information in long-term memory, as well as for just everyday life. This is the final stage of memory processing where memory is, you guessed it, stored for longer periods of time, ranging from minutes to a lifetime. Long-term memory is where we have fun <laughs> dividing this into many different types. We have explicit memory on the left and implicit memory on the right. Explicit memory or declarative memory, it's the same thing, accounts for memories that we must consciously recall with effort and focus. So these include things like episodic memory and semantic memory. Episodic memory is the specific events or experiences, while semantic memory is for general knowledge and facts. On the other hand, our implicit memory is also known as our non-declarative or unconscious memory. This type of memory accounts for acquired skills and conditioned responses to circumstances and stimuli. This includes procedural memory, which is for motor skills and habits. The classic example of a procedural memory is riding a bike. Your body knows how to balance and pedal, even if you haven't ridden a bicycle for years. Explicit memory accounts for memories that we must consciously recall with effort and focus. So to one last time go over this tree, long-term memory, we have two different branches, explicit and implicit. Explicit is made up of declarative memories, such as episodic and semantic memory. Semantic memory are the facts you're memorizing for the MCAT. Episodic memory is memory of like your childhood. Implicit memory is unconscious, and it has procedural memory within this, including skills and different tasks, like how to quickly click the play button. Now let's move on to disease that can affect memory. Alzheimer's disease is a degenerative brain disorder linked to a loss of acetylcholine in neurons that link to the hippocampus. It causes dementia and memory loss. Korsakoff syndrome is another disease that can cause memory loss. It's caused by a thiamine deficiency in the brain and causes retrograde amnesia as well as enterograde amnesia. Another symptom is called confabulation. This is the fabrication of vivid but fake memories. Finally, let's talk about interference. Retroactive interference is when new memories make you forget old memories, whereas proactive is when old memories prevent you from learning new memories. How I like to keep this straight is the retro or pro is referring to what is being lost. So retro, like retro times in the past, is old, right? So we're forgetting the retro, we're forgetting old. Whereas proactive, pro means new, we're forgetting the new stuff because of the old stuff. Whew. We've discussed a lot today about the different types of memory, including sensory memory, short-term memory, working memory, and long-term memory. We also talked about the explicit and implicit memory, 
and retrieval. Furthermore, we discussed diseases that can affect memory, like Alzheimer's disease, Kharkov syndrome, and confabulation. And finally, we discussed interference and how it can disrupt memory formation and recall. There's a lot of stuff in this video, so make sure that you get it into your Anki cards. And I want to thank you for watching our video on memory, and I will see you next time.